Welcome to Health, Wealth, and Happiness, Season 6, Session 3, where we tackle a tough topic, especially right now, in light of what's happened right here around the studio in the sky, related to Hurricane Ian, and that is how to survive and thrive in times of chaos, uncertainty, and destruction. And boy, have I seen a lot. About two and a half weeks ago, as of today, our Mastery Community Training Day here in October, we had Hurricane Ian almost a category five hurricane come within literally miles of the studio and we got hit with the worst side of the hurricane eye wall. And I'll be sure to kind of describe this in our mastery community if you want to hear the, the technical pieces to this. All that means is that we had the highest level of winds, the deepest levels of surge, and the most destruction that a hurricane's capable of producing happen within basically a 25 mile radius of where I'm standing. And wow, so many stories, so many things. I'm so happy to report all of us are fine. A part of my lifestyle, Florida living plan when I moved here 20 years ago, is if Mother Nature's knocking on our door, I'm not here for it. Mother Nature says, hey, I might be coming through with a big hurricane. I'm going to see family, friends, and really live into a lot of what we're talking through today of having a great plan, of really being, a sh be, being clear about how I want to experience that kind of devastation and destruction. Fortunately, uh, we've had, what is it, three, four, five fairly big storms in the area in the last 20 years since I've lived here. And for all of them, except Ian, we haven't had the surge, the water levels rise from the Gulf of Mexico coming into the rivers, the inlets and all these kind of things. And this time we did have the surge. People were not prepped for that. They didn't think there would be that big of a surge. And so I wanted to start today by sharing some of the chaos and then we'll dive into some of what Jordan Peterson likes to talk about, the order. Or in high performance, we like to talk about the challenge, the struggle, the frustration, and then step into the ambition, what's possible, the better tomorrows, the future vision. A lot of those themes carried me through a lot of the things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. Of course, when chaos is introduced from Mother Nature, what we're seeing, a lot of people are reporting to me, is that the not so nice side of people come out in many instances. And conversely, the great side of people come out. So I've been seeing the yin and the yang of all this, and I'll dive more into illustrations and so on in a minute, but I really wanted to share with you, here is what happens when surge is part of the equation. So this picture here is on Fort Myers Beach, and this is the main drag, it's, I think it's called Astera Boulevard, and over there is what's called the Lani Kai, and it's a, a probably six story hotel, and on the top they have a sun deck and everything where you can go, and we've been there many times, seen some of my friends perform. Um, sat on these little sliders they have that you can just sit and look over the Gulf of Mexico, right on the other side of this is the Gulf of Mexico. And this is a live ca or live camera as of the recording. Uh, the, it was live recording as the surge was building. And this was just the storm was kicking up on Wednesday, I think it was September 28th. This was probably around noon. I don't know if the time's on, I don't see it. And then the water started to come in. This is way more than whatever any storms ever produced, by the way in Fort Myers Beach in the last 20 years since I've been here. So the water level is probably around three feet above ground at this point, maybe two feet, some areas. And the same camera, the same camera, this is around 530, where the highest surges were reported throughout the area. Same camera. Whew, just seeing that gives me chills. You can see the telephone pole, you can see the trees, the building's gone. The Lani Kai did survive, the whole first floor. If you go online, you can see the pictures was completely down to the, the supports, the concrete supports. Everything was stripped out just from the sheer force of wind and water flow. So let's go back through that one more time. Nanikai, this building, Mysterio Boulevard, there's restaurants and houses back in here. A little bit, little bit of a surge, poof. Everything's kind of gone. Anything that was built, you know, um, out of wood has been leveled and gone. The scariest part is that so many people have reported, some of them I know, others that I didn't know, saying, I feel like, and this is what one guy said, kind of sums it up, I feel like a complete idiot for putting myself, my family, my pets, and even my friends, because I'm a mentor to them, a role model to them, at risk, staying through something that we could have easily gone to the other coast of Florida. So just so you have a frame, Florida shape, like this, Hurricane Ian came here, this is where I am, on the other coast is Miami, and all they, they really got was just winds and a little bit of rain bands. So 
two hour drive across Alligator Alley would have put them out of harm's way. And this is a big reason why some of the work that I do and what I believe in, Wisdom for Humanity with Sir Patrick, part of our mastery community, love working on this because it feels like some of these things should be common sense, right? But they're not common practice. It goes back to our high performance principles. That all said, I want to send so much love, care, and compassion for all the people that reached out to me and who've been the helpers, we'll talk about that in a minute, for helping so many beautiful people down here in Southwest Florida. There's people like us who are in a high rise and we were in winds but no surge and we literally had power back within five days, which in Irma back in 2017 when that hurricane came through, um, took three weeks to get power back. So teams of people, teams of emergency response crews came in. This is the team of emergency response utility trucks from all over the eastern part of the U.S. There's like 300 trucks as soon as they opened this bridge to Sanibel Island, if you're familiar with the way it lays out, the Sanibel Island Causeway or bridge got wiped out in parts and they were able to rebuild that within weeks, which they said typically it's within years, <laughs> new world versus old world. As soon as they got that rebuilt, at least temporarily, they got the utility trucks out there to start rebuilding, literally rebuilding, not restoring, but rebuilding the infrastructure. So you see all the helpers, all the people out there and really rocking it out. And I just want to make sure that we see the yin and the yang of this. There are people who decided, you know, I'm going to sit this one out. I've been through many before, but none of the hurricanes before had surge. And that's one of the heaviest killers in a hurricane of this magnitude is the surge. And you can see why. And then we have the helpers, the people that came down tens of thousands, I guess, utility trucks came down and were parked strategically waiting for the storm to move through and then moved in. And they had such a, a plan and a strategy and a vision for how they were just going to like work from basically I-75 is here and then all the damage got progressively worse as you went out to the Gulf. So there's I-75, the Gulf of Mexico through this part. They didn't get surge. It's basically a few miles. Um, it was pretty much a restoration job. As they got closer and closer, the utility truck linemen were, were reporting, it wasn't so much restoration as it was rebuild. And they just stepped into it. Many times they put themselves at risk. Some people had generators. And when you put a generator into your house circuitry, and if you don't shut off the main breaker, it feeds back through the power lines. And when the linemen pick it up, I, I, apparently, I don't know this to be exactly true. I know that it can happen. A few linemen lost their lives because they hit hot wires when they were trying to reconnect things just because people didn't shut off generators, the power back to the main power in, in input, if that makes sense. So I just want to celebrate the lives of the people that are helping us, celebrate the lives of the people that um, maybe didn't make it, and celebrate the, the helpers that are out there really making sure that we're taken care of, and how the world just stepped into care, compassion, and help in a major way. And that's the sort of yang part of this. The ying <laughs> is even in the closest of my circles, friends are reporting and reaching out and I'm coaching them through and talking through situations where, hey, you know what? I said something that I shouldn't have or I didn't support my friend in the way that I wanted to or I didn't support a family member in that way and now they won't talk to me. We had that right in our own backyard, so to speak, uh, with my daughter and her mom. And um, I'll get into that illustration a little bit too because this, this is really important to think about as chaos enters life, as uncertainty enters life, as destruction can enter life. So for those of you who reached out to check on me, send me tons of love, I want to say thank you so incredibly much. I'm, I was getting texts, voicemails, and everything else, and I'm like, hey, you know what, part of my Florida living plan, my high-performance Florida living plan, is not to be in harm's way <laughs> and get all my family out of the way and make sure that we're taking care of it. Even better, and we'll talk about this, number four on our list today, is asking, how can we make this fun? Even though there's chaos and de destruction going on, how can we take ourselves and put us into a place where we acknowledge that's happening, yet still have fun, adventure, and maybe that sense of freedom? And that's not a question many were asking. But now as they look back, they're like, yeah, I wouldn't have stayed. And especially if they have younger kids, I would have created fun for them get their minds off of this. They don't have the, depending on their age, they don't have the mental construct to handle this level of chaos and destruction. And to them, this is their whole world falling apart. They don't 
have a frame to look look at things other than this sort of black and white picture of oh my how the my toys and everything are gone and that happened many times i've heard many stories of that or they've been soaked in muck toxic water up to six ten feet right up to the ceilings in some instances over the ceilings and others especially as they were more towards the gulf of mexico that's the reality of this and that's the kind of stack so when we think about how to survive and thrive through the lens of chaos, uncertainty, destruction, the very first thing ties so well into how we start our, our series uh, this, set, this season, and that is food. We think about, and this is what I deeply thought about as I moved down to Florida. Keep in mind, a little background for you, I studied meteorology and astronomy in college, and I recognized the sheer force of hurricane winds, right? I mean, and surge, these kind of things, as you can see. I don't want to be anywhere near that. <laughs> so I'm out of here. Um, my point with that is for an outcome, which is the, the last one I like to start with the end in mind. Foo is feelings, outputs, outcomes. The outcome that I want to have, even under extreme chaos, extreme uncertainty, destruction, is I'm keeping my senses and I'm keeping a positive attitude and I'm having trying to have fun as weird as that can sound and as so anti what people are feeling that can sound that's where I want to sit and I've worked so hard through my high performance journey especially in the last well 11 years as I really ramped up high performance in my life to be very clear about how I want to feel throughout this process how does one do that so we're going to break that down today, but as I think about this idea of really surviving, we'll start with sur sur surviving, then we'll get into thriving, surviving through chaos, uncertainty, and destruction. The first thing is the outcome. One of the outcomes that I want to have is I want to assure that my family is completely taken care of. So I've had to have arguments. I've had to go toe to toe with people, family and friends, I'll extend that to friends, to say, don't put yourself in harm's way. Like, at least go to the other coast. At least move out of harm's way. Not only because you have the chance of not surviving, and can you live with the fact that you've, you've been responsible for somebody else not surviving a storm that was easily, we got warning, right? Mother Nature gives you warning with hurricanes, especially with today's tech. We got warning, get out of harm's way. The outcome is safety of those I love, care for, and serve. That's one outcome. Another outcome is, hey, you know what? If we lose everything, I'm very clear on the fact of what I must have, if possible, with me to keep on trucking in life. And it's a very minimal set of things because I'm responsible for a couple of businesses, hundreds of customers, these kinds of things. So I need to have my digital nomad kit. And it's a shout out to you, Rob, really thinking about what that looks like. Rob posted on Facebook. He goes, I'm gonna be moving a lot in the next few months. What do I actually need how are you guys living if you're like a digital nomad? So I'll be talking a little bit about that as we get into this. But that's another outcome. I got to have the ability to communicate and take care of those that I am responsible for. So having my sort of, we'll call it the red kit, just the essentials of necessity for me to do what I need to do to live into my responsibilities. So these are just a couple ideas. The outputs, what am I outputting? One of the things I noticed right out of the gate, as soon as people were kind of coming out of the storm that stayed, is they had no um, internet access, but they did have text. It's a weird thing. The, the internet got knocked out in Southwest Florida for the most part, but the cell phone companies got mobile towers. They have them on trailers, I guess, and they put them right into play pretty quick, but that only served through cellular network, not like the data part of the cellular network. So you could send texts and you could make calls, and at times it was really choppy, terms of being able to make a call and the service was kind of in flux but the internet was not available for a few days and in, in many instances especially on the outer islands it's still not available so we're feeding them information so I became information base hey here's what's going on here's what you need to be aware of um, here's here's what's showing up around where you're living like the roads are impassable these kind of things buckle up you know get settled in and make sure you've got what you need and if you don't have it let me know and I'll see what I can do to coordinate. So kind of a command central out of the area through the lens of me 
you know, living into my outputs, taking care of the people that have reached out. Big part of the outcome, outputs towards the outcome. And how did I want to feel as I did this? I wanted to feel of service. And I've thought about this a lot in advance. I wanted to feel of service. I wanted to feel that all my stuff was taken care of because I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm like a minimalist and I have my things taken care of and I was good. If everything here in the studio got washed out for some reason, even though we're eight stories up, if everything, you know, maybe the windows broke and just tons of rain came in and penetrated, we had to split this thing down to the metal studs and rebuild, cool. I was like, everything that we have, everything that we have that's not with me can go. And I have to say, that was a very difficult place to get to. Finally reached that about 10 years ago. To be comfortable with the fact that all the stuff I've acquired and that so much of the stuff in 2006 that I let go of, I'm okay with it going. I'm okay with it being gone. It's not about the things. You guys, you, if you're in our master you know I'm of experiences, not stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about this with, with what we were talking about here in number three. But the concept is really clear. I have what I need to serve, to support, and take care of me and my family and my friends. I've got my red circle of crucial items that are like irreplaceable. And these are the things. Everything else, it can go. Well, will I be sad that certain pictures are gone and stuff like that? Yeah, but I probably have them scanned anyway. That's one thing I did is I digitized all the pictures that matter. <laughs> I mean, I take all the pictures now, obviously digitally, but previous to digital photography in the 90s and so forth, I scanned all the pictures. So I have them and I have them backed up and I have those backups with me. So does that all make sense how this is kind of fleshing out? Feelings, outputs, outcomes. Did you notice the theme of what I shared? The theme was really clear. It's about taking care of me, putting my mask on first, so to speak, and then immediately getting out to help others. Literally within hours of the storm passing through, I was ready to help, communicate, take care of. I had no idea that that, that weird thing about the internet being totally out, but texting working, and they had just no idea of what was going on. And we're all seeing that, that would, the, as they, um, the next morning, Thursday morning came, there were people out with drones and there were helicopters and oh my gosh. It was like, um, yeah, your house, by the way, on Fort Myers Beach doesn't exist anymore. I, that conversation, that wasn't fun. Um, three businesses that we have served for 20 years, 15 years, or the whole plaza they were in, underwater, uh, pretty much just washed out. That was on Santa Island. Um, had to have that conversation. Hey, they're reaching out to me. Hey, we really need to set up a GoFundMe. We need to do this. Rocking that out. But that's me living to my purpose through the lens of a destructive very destructive event. Is that helpful? I just want to make sure these are all part of the visioning process that I've gone through, which is number one on our training list. So that ends the perspective part of our work today. Let's go ahead and get into the training. The first piece to the training for really handling and sur surviving and thriving is mindset and perspective equal clarity. And if you're not familiar with the fact, when you get clear on things and you have a lot of clarity, it reduces overwhelm, it reduces uncertainty, it reduces that mindset of chaos. It really helps. Here's the person that I'm going to be when you know, adversity, chaos, destruction hit. Here's the perspective I wanna keep. And this is what I'm clear about. Does that make sense? So really, really clear. One of the themes that helped big time and my step, beautiful stepmom, Grammy Kay, we call her, shared this. She goes, advanced planning rocks. And I said, oh, that couldn't have been more, more well put in regard to what just happened because that's exactly what's happened through the lens of how I'm approaching this. Got everything planned as much as I could have. And we'll talk about how I got to there and I can help you with that as well. But everything is about the strategy, the vision, and the plan. And that was really helpful for keeping mindset in perspective. So a couple other themes that really helped me, and they may help you going through anything similar to this, is always be looking for the helpers. This comes from um, Mr. Rogers and his mom. Whenever there's devastation or chaos, he said, his mom said to him, sweetheart, always look for the helpers. Always look for the people helping. And as I was going through and curating, putting out content, because some people are getting on Facebook, um, sporadically, I was just putting out content that was, and you can go back in my Facebook feed to see it, that showed the devastation, but also showed the helpers. 
and there's a ton of helpers in there. As a matter of fact, a really great friend of mine, Marin, shared a story of where she was taking cover in a house while the, everything flooded right around them, like to the first levels, top of the first level, to how they went, two of the people in the house they were in, went across the street. This girl captured the whole 30 minute video. It's on my Facebook feed. I'll, I'll link to it below as well to rescue two elderly people who were drowning in their house because of the surge. And the whole story's captured. But I was looking for the helpers. And I'm sharing the story of the helpers. So my mindset and perspective weren't through the lens of what we call below the line behavior, if you followed any of our previous training, about blame, excuse, denial, it's happening to me, blah, blah, blah. It was about how can I help people see the light through the darkness? And that's really, really critical for surviving and thriving, at least in my opinion, in chaos, uncertainty, and destruction. Looking for the helpers, being the helper, facilitating information, especially in today's day and age, helping other people through that lens. The other thing that really helped me and so many people that I've worked with is having a vision, strategy, and a plan. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. I thought deeply as I moved to Florida, because so many people were like, um, do you remember Hurricane Andrew, which happened like 14 years before we moved down and a couple other hurricanes that come through recently. And you put yourself in harm's way and all this. And I said, you know what? I get it. And I, again, going back to the fact that I studied meteorology and, and astronomy and these kind of things, I was like, when Mother Nature's knocking at the door, I'm not going to be there. I was the only one for Hurricane Charlie in 2004 who packed up Josie, who was three months old. Paige was like um, two years old. Our dogs and everything, we head out like three days in advance of the storm coming through. I'm like, I'm not going to be there. Nobody was evacuating. People are like, are you kidding? And then when the storm hit, they're like, whoops. And so the next storm came through that, that season. We had a lot of storms roll through this area. I think it was Wilma. Maybe it was a storm before that. But the next storm came through and all the roads were packed getting out of here. It was crazy. That was the scene uh, back then. But the vision, the strategy and plan are going back to core values, back to outcomes. I want to make sure that my family's safe and taken care of. And on top of it, we're going to go visit family in Georgia. So we'll have some family time while the storm rolls through. We'll assess the damage, see when we can get back. The worst part, by the way, of having a hurricane come through isn't necessarily the wind and the rain. The surge is definitely bad. It's after it. The roads are impassable. Power is typically out for weeks. And heat and humidity, mold, mildew, build like overnight, literally overnight. And so you don't want to be around that. So let things sort out, let roads become sort of passable, assess where you live. These are all parts of my vision, strategy, and plan before I would even consider coming back. We always talked about power four. First, power, AC, water, internet. We can bring bottled water in. So having running water, which we did not have for a few days, I wasn't here for it again, I was evacuated, but we did not have running water as the water systems got shut down from the surge and damage. Uh, they were able to get those back up in a couple days. But we can bring bottled water, and as long as we have power and AC, we can assure everything is you know, um, taken care of if there's any damage. We might be able to assess for that, get the mold and mildew out. That's a huge problem down here in South Florida, especially black mold. And then internet. So, so many people, especially up through the week, the week after the hurricane rolled through, had some of the four. Typically, they had power, AC, and water, no internet. Um, some of them had power and AC, no water, no internet. <laughs> But that was the concept. So all part of the vision, strategy, and plan. Well, let's stay here and assure that we're not adding to the, the mix, if you will. Gas is short, lines are there, the pumps aren't working because electricity's out, people are freaking out because there's, they're, not, they're running out of gas, especially for generators and stuff like that. So let's just stay out of the chaos, let it sort itself out, but let's support remotely. That's part of the vision, strategy, and plan. So if there's anything you're taking away from this, through the lens of a hurricane, through the lens of mother nature, through the lens of chaos in general, have a vision, strategy, and plan. The best part is, are, is part of your vision, strategy, and plan being the helper. And I can tell you it's not only very um, rewarding through the lens of purpose, but the world needs more helpers. Don't you believe that to be true? <laughs> so, so powerful when we think of it through that lens. Just want to make sure we're landing this for you. Total side note, another illustration, is that um, my girl's mom decided with her family to stay and they live on a canal that got completely uh, flooded 
and then it went, blew out their pool cage, it overcame their pool, started to enter their house. Fortunately, the tide stopped there. Their house is at a higher elevation. They were there for all of it. Um, so there was a lot of emotional oh, in, engagement, enragement even. And there was a situation where my daughter wasn't there because I told her, make sure you're inland if you're staying in South Florida. And she did stay in South Florida. So she stayed with a friend way inland out of the surge. And that house happened to be freshly built, has a built-in backup generator that lasts like five days. So she weathered through the storm and everything else. And then her mom decided to tell her, hey, you know what? You need to come and help clean this up. Now, my daughter's allergic, very allergic to certain molds, mildews, um, and then has, like I have it a little bit, my mom has it, is real sensitive to certain things from our bronchial tubes and our uh, breathing and so forth. And she says, I'm not going to work in that because I don't know what's in it and I don't want to be in the hospital, which is a very real thing when you have those kind of allergies. Um, but her mom didn't want to hear it. And so her mom gave her an ultimatum and said, pretty much in texts, you're kicked out of the house because my daughter is living there. She's going to college. You need to go move in with your dad. Not a shock to me. I already had a vision, strategy, and plan for that. And we had already like talked that out well in advance, knowing the dynamics of that side of the equation. We're like, hey, if worst case scenario, if you get kicked out, you have always got a place here. We'll make it your worst. And that showed up during this whole ordeal of what's happened in the last couple of weeks. And we owned that. I went in like fast and we moved her stuff, boxed it up, got it organized. We recycled and sim simultaneously there's certain clothing that's needed and all these other things. So we were able to take some stuff to donate it immediately. We went through and we set up her room here in, in the condo where the student's guy is. We set a room up, decked it out, took a couple days to really get it there. We have just a couple little things to do to really make it feel like it's hers. And we set it up in such a way, and this will go to this question, how can we really make this exceptional is one variation of question number four here. How can we set it up in such a way that if you get, she's looking to get a position as an RA um, at the college to, to be the floor um, guardian, essentially, <laughs> in a dorm, and they're about ready to hire her maybe in spring. And I said, I want to set this up in a way where we can modularly take this, pack it up, and get you moved in quick, and you'll have little to no downtime. We'll literally have everything set the way it is here is how we're going to roll it in there. And so we applied that as we structured everything. Keeping in mind that the old place she was in had a room of chaos. I won't get into too much detail, but there was a lot of animals jumping around, doing things. The laundry isn't done um, hardly ever, and it's not easily accessible. That's personal issues and stuff like that. So she went from, in one sense, a land of chaos to a land of structure, order, and smarts for the future. And I just want to make sure that you're sensing and seeing the illustrative reality of these things, to have a vision, strategy, and plan, to have contingency plans. I've got contingency plans all over the place. That's just how my mind works. If you want to sit down and think through your vision, strategy, and plan for anything, get into our mastery community roundtables, we'll do that. Or set up a checking call with me and we'll do that too. So my big question is, I've thrown a ton of information at you, how are you structured to handle chaos, uncertainty, and destruction, if it shows up in your world. Do you have plans? Do you have values, how you want to be, themes that you're going to stay stick to? You know, when I was throwing all this information about how my daughter is not helping out and I'm done with her and all this kind of stuff to be a text, I'm just like, hey, okay, wow, right, I got it. Um, yeah, well, we'll set her, we'll, well, she can make this room hers and we'll go after it. I did not get into the drama of it. I just factually said, here's how we're going to go after it. Here's what was set up. We'll set her for success this way. That's fine. And I tried to say thank you for hosting her essentially for the last year as she's trying to keep her expenses down and, and really um, amplify her crafts and her degrees, entrepreneurship and art, and really go after those things. Uh, I wasn't able to get that through because I got shut down. <laughs> No worries, but that's the scene. That's me sticking into the mindset and perspective for clarity. The old me would have totally gone toe to toe on that. Stepped into the gossip, drama, ugh, blame, excuse, denial, negative energy. And there would, don't get me wrong, there's parts of me that just want to 
go after it, but I'm not. Does that make sense? So really, really critical as we think through surviving and thriving in chaos. Do you have a plan for that? So let's keep on going because I'm going to start fleshing this out for you even further. Next up, know what you stand for and what you don't stand for. This is another way to think about your mindset and perspective. We've done this exercise in previous, previous trainings where we have a list of values that we stand for that are acceptable and a list of values that are not acceptable, you know, um, or that we don't stand for that aren't as important to us, those kind of things. So for me, a couple values that have changed over the years, one is extrinsic values like uh, money, status, fame. I'm not about that at all anymore. I used to be, um, the acquisition of things. You guys know my story. If you've been with us, <laughs> not about that. So it's just about experiences, stuff and having just really great times with those I care for, love and serve and assuring that I'm around the right people that I've, I've really built friend groups, including all our beautiful, lovely master group members. Thank you so incredibly much for being here with me as we talk through some of the more difficult subjects for health, wealth, and happiness in life and beyond <laughs> today. I just really appreciate being on the journey with you. And I love this back and forth that we get as we step into these topics. So we got to be very clear about what we stand for and we don't stand for. Now I realize this is a lot of strategy and vision in the front end, but it pays off in dividends when stuff shows up. It's one thing to say, Hey, you know what? I'm evacuating people that literally ridicule me. Why are you evacuating? It's not even that bad. It's not going to be that bad. I'm like, a, you're not a weather person. B, we don't have any idea if this thing's going to amplify what I've studied is showing that these are the conditions that will amplify this storm, which it did. And that it could go up to Tampa. It could come down here. I don't want to be around it. Well, that's, that's a, a loser's way out. I got told that <laughs> I'm like, well, whatever I'm taking care of me and assuring that uh, we're safe sound and we'll come back and get things restructured and help rebuild however we can. That's a big part of this, but I'm not hanging around those people predominantly. Um, got it. I hear you. That's not my scene. That's your scene. And I'm good with that. That comes back to the four agreements, second agreement. Don't take things personally. And I thought when I first read that book in 2005, I think it was, that was like a joke. I'm like, that's not even possible, but I do take certain things personally, but I don't take other things personally. Like if somebody says to me, Try you really could improve over here and do this. I'm going to take that. Okay. That's sound advice. It seems like something I need to explore. You're a loser for evacuating. That's not my scene. That's your scene. Like I know why I'm doing it. I'm evacuating because I have a value around safety. I have a value around compassion, care, and not imprinting in people's minds, total destruction, which is like a PTSD thing. Some of the kids had to go through things that they're going through um, two, two people that I know of are taking their kids who are like five and seven through therapy now because they saw so much destruction happen so fast. And I think a couple pets were lost because of the surge, these kind of things like, ugh, I can only imagine, but I also think about it through the lens of what I've been talking through. And that is I'm not around for that pets, everything go with us when we evacuate. Does that all make sense? So we just really want to make sure as we think about this, that we're, um, intentional. We've got a vision. We've got a strategy. We've got a plan as we think about chaos entering our lives and, and moving through that. Next item up is envision and plan for the worst. This is really kind of a difficult exercise for a lot of people. And remember in our high performance work session four, the core sessions is courage in the courage checklist. There's three kinds of pain, loss, pain, process, pain, and outcome pain. So as I'm thinking about and planning for the worst, and I'm like, we've lost everything. Um, people are hurt. Some people may have not made it. This is really difficult. Like I was saying, um, how am I showing up? What's happening? What am I, what are my thoughts? And then it's so helpful to shine lights on the big fears, the big pains that we have as part of fear, loss, pain, process, pain, outcome, pain. So I literally, documented the worst case scenario of this building crumbling down for some weird reason. I don't know why it would, who knows? Um, and then if I was on site when it was happening, grab what's important and run or just run, but I really have a vision set up for what I need to feel, um, able to survive and thrive to move forward. The beauty is when you go to that degree of depth, 
in the vision strategy and planning process, you're really able to say, okay, wow, this isn't that bad. When I got back here after being evacuated, um, and the power, the AC, the internet, and the water were, were back on, although we still had the boil water, um, it was a relief. There was some damage, there's some damage right over there outside of this terrace. Um, I'm like, we have a structure. <laughs> We have no like penetration, none of the windows were broken. Um, we are so fortunate because when we envision and plan for the worst, and I don't want to spend a lot of time in the worst scenario, I want to just get it out of me. Anything above that is better. It's like the natural kind of answer to that. Does that make sense? So really thinking about that. So I had to think about when you think about categories for the worst, it's like the people that are important to me the things that are important to me, my home, my car, um, the things that I have in our little storage unit that we have as part of our condo, which isn't much because I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, okay, all that gets washed out. Who am I? What happens? You know, that's the scenario here. I don't want to spend too much time there. If you want to spend more time there, let me know if you want to do a check-in call to get that set up for you. Um, and we'll talk about that on our Mastery Community Roundtable too. But that's the essence of how my mind has worked and how anything above and beyond the worst is good or awesome. Like, that's the thrive part of surviving. It's like, wow, came back and I'm able to record. Had to delay our session for a week. I'm able to record, do my work, step back into it. Although there's a ton of devastation around us. Like, if I show you pictures. And maybe in a round table, I'll show you some just around here. The park that I'm so always talk about is closed indefinitely. A um, lot of damage in there. There's the beaches, you know, big thing about Southwest Florida is going to the beaches. All the beaches are closed right now. Um, we don't know when they're going to be back open, these kind of things. So we come up with other ways. And this, I'm running on the sidewalks instead of running in the park and handling things. And that's all part of the contingency plan for that. But I'm okay with that. Recognizing that this too will pass and we're moving forward from here. Is that helpful? So I'd love to know, as we assess for you, do you have documented... And we'll call it your family survival guide or your survival guide. Do you have a survival guide documented of the mindset perspective that you want to keep with life themes, values even, what you stand for, what you don't stand for? Do you have documented a vision, strategy, and plan for how you're going to handle it when certain things come up? And maybe it's not documented, but you have thought about it. Really, really critical. Have you envisioned a plan for the worst? That was an exercise I went through in 2004, a year before my ex-wife and I got divorced, to envision the divorce and how I could step into it from a place of excellence. It, that was incredibly helpful. Think of what I just shared with you. Envision you're going to be getting divorced, which I kind of could see was happening here in the short, medium term, um, and then how you're going to handle it with excellence, to be the best friend to your ex, which is difficult, to be the best parent through it, to start over and to release bitterness, release, you know, work to release the hurt. I had to get a therapist, psychotherapist for that. And she's amazing. Still talk with her. <laughs> um, and then really set a new stage for better tomorrows. I developed this massive parenting plan and I really worked from that space to build the best foundation for my girls and my relationship with their mom. Uh, this was back in 2005 and six. So I just want to make sure that we're kind of being real with that part of it. The third element is incredibly important, and boy did it show up. So many of our Master Q members, oh my gosh, it was so rewarding to know. Find and align your tribe. Part of me being out of town, I was on a trip with my best, one of my best friends, Todd, and we're in uh, Las Vegas. I had these comps and things, and I'm like, Todd, you want to go to Vegas? Yeah, but this wasn't part of an evacuation. I just happened to be out there. But literally, I was supposed to fly back the day the hurricane was here. And I'm out there, and as soon as the hurricane hit, I extended my time out there. Todd had to fly back. So I'm talking with a friend of mine, Tony, who was a bartender at Bardot, which is a place in Aria. It's a French patisserie um, cafe. And I'm talking with him, and he goes, and I've known him for over a decade. And he says, Char, we have a room. We have 3,600 square feet. We've got an extra room. You are welcome to use it for as long as you need it. I got you, man. And he is puts his heart on his shoulder, like shirt sleeves, he is that guy. And I knew he meant it. And I was like, wow. And all this was coming out. 
And I said, Tony, I cannot thank you enough for that. Sharing the love and meaning it. And he goes, I go, you know, we have the same for you. If you got in a situation, you need to be put up, you have, you know, come and stay with us too. That's the tribe piece. So many people are asking me, what can I do? What can I send? What, how can I help? How can I contribute? Um, that's the part. This was a test to that. As part of surviving and thriving in chaos, it's having a great group of people. Predominantly that stay above the line, although we're all human. Even I got negative and neutral here and there. Um, predominantly staying above the line, going back to our training, of ownership, accountability, responsibility, growth mindset, ambition, just good energy. And connecting with them. So many people were like, hey, if, if power's gonna be out for a month or two, I, I'm like developing, I developed this plan, laying it out, I was sitting on the plane, I'm laying it out, I'm like, okay, we'll go see them for three days, we'll go over there for a week, we'll go over here, and we'll just go see all the peoples. <laughs> <laughs> and spend quality time with them. Does that all make sense? Completely different mindset than what so many people are like, oh my gosh, all my things, my toys, my boats, all this stuff is just gone and I'm devastated. That's what I've had that conversation with quite a few people. I'm like, hey, I don't really have much and everything that I have is okay. Um, but what I am doing is being clear about who the people are that support and how I can support them. And I just want to make sure that we kind of Sure, we've got the, the big theme of season six is relationships here in our work. And this is everything about surviving and thriving is being around great people. If you do not have somebody who's there for you during times of chaos, challenge, frustration, you know you do. Excuse me, you know you do. And that's me. I'm here for you. Please reach out. Let me know. Email, message me, whatever it is. And let me know how I can support, take care of, and help you. That sound good? That is critical. Could not believe the amount of support, love, care, offering of others, uh, just based on, you just never know, right? You just, it's just amazing to see that in action. So thank you all so much. It's for so many, I received literally hundreds of messages, texts and everything, and just taking care of us, and I'm sending that love right back to you. Which leads us to number four. And this is, even in times of chaos, uncertainty, destruction. How can we make this dot, dot, dot? How can I make this fun? How can I make this better? How can I make this exceptional? So we get the power back, we get everything set, and then I get dumped on with this idea that my oldest daughter's getting kicked out of the other house and you have a day to get all your stuff out. Okay, got it, okay. Well, we've already laid out kind of a contingency plan for it. Let's roll with it. And we put it into play, and within 24 hours, we had uncertainty minimized, certainty maximized, chaos minimized, order maximized, and this destruction of, you know, relationship, mindset. That stays over there, we're going to build for new. And we're setting up gaming nights every week, we're doing all these things to facilitate some of the things we've already covered. Building a great tribe talking with her friends, making sure they, they're recognizing of the fact that her life changed pretty significantly and that we're building for better tomorrows and more fun and less struggle. That came from that line of questioning. I cannot thank Brendan, our master coach in Certified High Performance Coaching and previous to Certified High Performance Coaching when I started working with him in 2011 for really helping me understand the importance of all this. Everything I'm sharing with you, everything I'm sharing with you, came from high performance principles that were taught to me and that I've coached literally now hundreds of others through thousands of sessions. This is all part of this conversation and this is all part of this sort of being, mindset and perspective put into play for the long term. To be able to stay at the top level of perspective instead of get sucked into the trench, that's where I've been able to stay. As long as I keep my sleep, hydration and eating decently and exercising. That's a big bonus. I'm good and I can handle it. And I gotta tell you, there are nights I'm going to bed at seven o'clock because I'm just taking all this information in and it's tearing me up and I'm trying to put good in the world. And I went to bed at seven o'clock and I got up at seven o'clock. <laughs> and I'm like, I got 12 hours of sleep. My body and my brain and my being needed it. I'm good with that. Well, let's serve, let's step into it. Is that helpful? Just really wanna illustrate this. So the biggest thing we can do as we pivot to really creating an environment to thrive in 
is how can we make this better? How can we make this exceptional? How can I make this world class? How can I make this fun? How can I make this feel the very best for everyone involved? How can I make this um, more supportive? How can I be more supportive for the people who are going through a lot of pain and struggle right now? So there's the relationship aspect to it and then the loss of things and then the rebuild and then the frustrations dealing with insurance companies and all these kind of things. But these are the kind of questions that I was thinking of for me and for others. So there's a survival aspect on my end and then a thrive aspect on my end and for others. And then the final one is really asking, notice that the power questions here, what really matters? And it comes down to, for me, being there for others, taking care of myself and relationships. Like that's the essence of it. As long as we have each other, we can rebuild, we can restructure, we can restore, we can go after it. And that's, that's the pinnacle piece to this. When we think about that through the lens of preparation, how we want to feel as a storm's coming our way, part of the foo piece to this. Okay. I want to feel like I've let everybody know I'm evacuating. Here's the reasons why. And here's why I think it's important that you should too. And here's a couple options for you. Um, if the storm's tracking here, go to Fort Lauderdale, Delray beach, um, Miami beach, Miami, any of the towns around Miami, find a hotel, holiday Inn express, whatever. Plan on staying there two nights and then assessing what's happened back at home. Most of my friends and most of the, well, all the high performers I've coached, um, well, that's not true. Two of the high performers I coached lived into that. Two of them were like, my house is built and we got a panic room and all this. I'm like, okay. Um, that's the reality of it though. Number one thing is important is living people and animals through the lens of what I've reflected on and taught and helped with others. The stuff, okay, there's certain things that are irreplaceable. Got that. And let's go ahead and ensure that we have a list. A couple critical things when we think about what really matters through the lens of things is pictures, is paper, especially insurance papers, is having an inventory of all the things you own so that when the insurance company is going to go to replace them, you have model numbers, um, serial numbers, and you have costs when you purchased it, date of purchase, these kind of things. I have it in a spreadsheet because if you don't have any of that, they immediately give you less. So these are some of the things that people have shared with me that were like, Hey, you know what, what matters is that when I get myself back on my feet, that I get replacement for the things I've got. And so many people, especially right now are going through the insurance process. Um, and they're like, they're giving me like a half of what this thing actually is, you know, to rebuy it, that kind of thing. Cause I don't have the exact paperwork documentation. Um, so I store all that in the cloud, essentially in a spreadsheet. I just want to make sure you're sensing. These are some of the things that go into this. And I know there's a lot of different sort of areas we can explore, but the premise is what really matters. It matters that we have each other that through this chaos, I've got good people in my tribe and I'm reaching out to them and they're reaching out to me and we're supporting each other that I'm clear about what I stand for and what I don't stand for. I'm clear about what, what we're going to do in case of the worst case scenario. I'm clear about who I want to support and how I'm clear about taking care of me first. That whole idea of the, put the mask on first, then for the rest, that concept. Does that all make sense? Hopefully this has helped. Let's step into the action part of our work today and kind of sum this baby up. This training will be out there as a, and maybe in the future we'll make it into a workshop to really help people structure their lives in a way. Because when you have great mindset, great perspective, you create clarity. When you have clarity that reduces uncertainty, overwhelm, it reduces the scare of what's possible through that lens as well. First thing is draw out your circle. The red represents the critical things that you just can't be without. So what I mean by that are the relationships in the red. Here's the people that are important to me that if chaos is coming, here's the people that are in my corner. Here's the people I need to take care of. In the context for a hurricane, here's the people that I need to take and sort out plans for in advance. Here's the people that I need to assure take, you know, migrating and, and that they've thought through some other things related to important papers, what they can't live without, those kind of things. The yellow is the things that, you know what, it'd be great if I could take that with me or if I could put that in a safe place, but it's not a necessity. And then the green is everything else. So the red is the critical pieces. The green is everything else. 
we can replace it. The sofa that I'm looking at right here, if it got washed out or this thing came through and this thing got sucked out somehow, okay, that needs to be rebuilt and we need a new sofa after we restructure the room and, and probably the TV and everything else. Got it, but that all can be replaced. Lives cannot. So lives are in the critical part. So the challenge for you is to think through that bullseye, if you will, through the lens of people and relationships and through the lens of things. If you're in a hurricane zone or in a fire zone, like some of the, our friends in California, is to make sure you have a list. And I challenge people for everything over $100 to have a list of all the things they own and then have it on line items, date purchase, model number, make, um, serial number, and then categorizing it. Can this, will I, will this hurt if I lose it? And some people are like this particular grandfather clock that it's been passed down for generations. It has no value. That I will be really hurt. That would be in the red area. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure we have some way for you to formulate, taking what we've covered today, put in action. So fill in your circles. Next, create your survival guide. I like to think of it as a family survival guide. First part is how I'm going to make sure I'm taking care of me. Here's the critical pieces coming right from that that I need to take with me. The digital nomad part. Just so you have a frame, this is for you, Rob. The laptop, let's point the doors over there, has all my billing, everything on it, has the ability to be in Windows and in, in the Mac. I use parallels for that. I have an iPad that can be a second monitor. I got my headset, my AirPods, so that I can be on calls and I was still doing coaching calls when I was in, uh, out of the area. I live into my coaching calls if people aren't in this area, I'm living into them. I'm not talking about my stuff too much, I'm staying in their world and continue with my commitments because you know that's just how I believe I need to show up as a coach. So I got all the tools for that. I've got the necessary supplies. I got like five, well I had seven days packed for clothing and undergarments and all that and I was staging laundry and making sure that we were taking care of there, rolling through that. It's all part of the family survival guide. And then the other aspect of it was I'm not going back until we have at least power, AC and water. Internet, if, as long as I have a, um, AT&T, that's the provider I use, I can use the hotspot to do my coaching calls. That's good. And usually the internet comes pretty quickly. It, didn't, it did take a little bit of time for them to get it back online um, so I can continue the work. Big part of that survival guide. Next, remember the two power questions. How can we make this fun? How can we make this a good experience? That's a, just a total sideswipe from what so many people are like. I'm in the middle of chaos and emotional turmoil. Why am I thinking about how to make this fun? Perspective. Mindset. Got this. This too will pass. What can we do? I was out running on the belt line in Atlanta because I flew from Vegas to Atlanta and I'm out running on the belt line and then trying new restaurants at night. Part of the adventure and fun of that. Seeing my brother and having some fun there. Trying out different things. The old me would have been like, oh my gosh, I'm in chaos and everything's falling apart. And I would have been sucked into that. But nope. I got all the stuff I need and all my people are okay. Now it's time to rebuild. I get it. And maybe that's with age, <laughs> but that's the concept. Is that helpful? And number four, if you want to develop your survival guide, please let me know. I'm here for you. We'll do it in our Zoom roundtable. We can record it so that other people can benefit from it, or we can do it in a check-in call, whatever that is for you. Thank you incredibly much for being on this journey with me and letting me share some reality of what just came up and how I think about it and approach it through the lens of all this beautiful work in the high performance journey of being thoughtful, intentional, purposeful as we step into the world, no matter what the world throws at us. I will see you in our next training and then in our Zoom roundtable. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.